All right, so I've been asked to tell a story about my time with uh, Moshe Feldenkrais. And I'll, I'll talk about uh, when I was in Israel, I went to visit him. And at that time he was, I, I don't remember exactly, I guess he was 80 or plus or minus a year, probably plus. And he was mainly at home, but he was he was seeing actively seeing clients. And I would I would just go and hang out in his apartment. And there'd be times when I'd be watching lessons, and there were times when uh, I would be there myself or with other people. And because he was uh, he'd had some health problems at that point, and so. He wasn't he wasn't going outside as much, you know, those of us who were visiting him, it was a very special time we got to spend with him. So at that time, I, I read a lot, I still read a lot, but not as much as I read then. And uh, somehow Moshe figured that out. And he started asking me questions about what I was reading and things like that and talking to me. And, you know, my attitude at that point, I was in my 20s, was, you know, I was sitting kind of at the feet of the master and, and I was so, you know, kind of full of idealism and I would, I would make these statements and always, you know, talking about principles, of the books and the principles of the method that they generated. And I think it just ultimately, it started to kind of annoy him um, <laughs> in the sense that he, you know, he liked to argue and he wanted me to argue with him. And I didn't realize that. So he'd start to refute things I was saying or refute what somebody was saying in the book I was talking about. And, you know, sometimes he would be refuting things that I considered to be essential components of the method. Um, but I, the, the one time, you know, I, I come in and how are you and da, 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 da. And he said, we started talking about something and he said, yeah, you know, I just think older people, it's like what the Eskimos do, just put them in a sled, send them out on the ice and leave them there. That's, I think that's the, really that's, that's the best plan. No, Moshe, older people are so, and we got into this like knockdown, drag out argument about this and where he's kind of um, baiting me. And, and, and when it was over, he says, he says, that was a good talk. <laughs> and, you know, now when I look back on it, I, I, I think a lot of things he did, he, he did with me and uh, asked of me were very intentional, actually. But it wasn't that clear to me at the time. And, uh, you know, one time I, a lot of kids were coming and this, this mother was waiting and I was on the floor with the kid and I started teaching the kid how to do a, a, a judo roll, Aikido roll. And um, Moshe came in and he sat at his desk and the mother was there. Moshe said nothing. The mother didn't know what to do. She thought she had an appointment with Moshe. I didn't know what to do. So I just kept teaching the kid the Aikido, the Aikido role. And uh, we were having a good time, but I was feeling a little uncomfortable. And then the session was over and left. And I, I, I really, I was naive. I just like, really, now I see Moshe was gonna see like, how did I relate to that kid? And was it a Feldenkrais lesson? And what was I doing? But I didn't even realize that. I was just like, what is happening here? Why, why aren't they going into the office? And then, you know, later I was talking to someone about it and they said, well, you must have been doing okay or he would have stopped you. Duh. But, you know, so it, he, he was creating learning situations all the time. And now I look back and I, I, I see that and I see the creativity there. Yeah, so that's, that's, my, that's my story.